So Precision share price has slumped and is trading at near an all-time low. You can see uh, the price today is at 85 cents. And if you just look down here, it says that the 52 week low is at 84 cents. And if I look at the five year record as well, you can see that it's declined significantly. And so I've been looking in a number of forums just to kind of observe what the perception is with this stock at the moment, what the sentiment is with this stock at the moment. And naturally everyone is bearish. You see a lot of people kind of shitting on the stock a little bit, which in a way, you know, is kind of understandable, but I'm gonna go into a lot more details about the strategic business decisions they've made and how this positions them favorably in the future. And so one of the key things to note as well is that obviously if it's trading at under $1, there is the risk of potentially a reverse stock split if they get um, a threat of delisting from the NASDAQ. Um, so so the, there are certain question marks around this stock, but like I said, I'm gonna go into a lot more detail about um, the business uh, and pull back the curtain a little bit more in this video. And so all of this bearishness comes after Precision laid off 20% of their staff. You know, there was also in the news the fact that they diluted shareholders and raised a further 30 million in the market as well. And then also the other thing was around the pipeline. Now, if you look at their pipeline right now, what they're actually doing is they're refocusing all of their resources in this PRGN 2012, which is the top one here. Their CRT programs, 3006, 3005, and 3007, and their other programs have been paused temporarily. Now, this does not mean that they've been discontinued. It just means that they've been paused, paused so that they can focus all of their resources, all of their money, you know, which typically may be allocated to numerous things in their pipeline at any one time, has to focus all on getting PRGN 2012, the top one, like I said, to be fully submitted and approved by the FDA. And so there's a couple of things to note with this is that, you know, Randall Kirk, who is largely responsible for all the strategic uh, decisions at Presagen, you know, he's been in this situation before with some of the other pharmaceutical companies that, you know, he's built out himself. I've spoken in the past a little bit about this guy's kind of incredible track record. And so before I delve into that, you know, one of the critical things to know with Randall Kirk, who's made a fortune, he's made 1.3 billion in the pharmaceutical industry, he holds a 10% stake in Presagen personally. And I just recently discovered that he actually holds a further 43% of this stock through a holding company called Third Security LLC. And so you can see on Simply Wall Street here that Third Security holds 42.9% of Presagen. And then when I go onto the Third Security website and I go over to the people section that you can see here, you can see that Randall Kirk is right here as uh, the, the founder and chairman. And so like I've mentioned in previous videos, you know, Randall Kirk was on the board of directors for clinical data and he was the chairman of the board when it was sold to Forest Laboratories for 1.2 billion. And when it was sold to Forest Laboratories for 1.2 billion, it was sold at a price of $30 per share. And so one of the critical reasons that cl clinical data was sold to Forest Laboratories for 1.2 billion was because of the development of a very specific antidepressant called Vibrid. And during his time at clinical data, you know, Randall Kirk was forced again to, to make very critical strategic decisions. You know, he had to shelve other development programs, other treatments on his pipeline in order to reallocate and refocus a lot of the resources into the development of Vibrid. And so what this basically meant, it meant shelving uh, projects that were less commercially viable, that weren't as far ahead. And this again comes down to like looking at things from a commercial and business standpoint. Which of the medications in our pipeline are further along? Which of them have a bigger need in the market? Which of them have a higher demand? And so all these are the kind of discussions that Randall Kirk is having when he's having to shelve certain elements or treatments in development on his pipeline and focusing a lot of the resources, you know, the, the money that the company has, um, the team and the employees that are, are developing these onto specific projects in the pipeline that are gonna bring the, bring the biggest return to, to them on a commercial standpoint. And fundamentally, the truth is, is that Randall Kirk's decision to streamline the business uh, focus on Vibrid in their pipeline, fundamentally it led to the acquisition of 1.2 billion from Forest Laboratories. And you can see from this article right here in Reuters, it kind of underlines that. It says that Forest Laboratories pledged an additional payments of up to $6 a share if clinical data's recently approved antidepressant Vibrid 
receives commercial milestones. And so one of the critical reasons that forest laboratories went into um, and, and bought clinical data was off the back of this, this drug, Vibrid. And that in itself was, came from a decision by Randall Kirk to focus specifically on the development of, of this drug. And, and this also happened at New River Pharmaceuticals. And so you can see right here that he founded and became the chairman of the board of New River Pharmaceuticals, which was then sold to Shear PLC for 2.6 Billion. And he did exactly the same thing at New River Pharmaceuticals in the development of a medication, a drug called Vivance, which is an ADHD drug. And so like with the previous example, Randall Kirk had a number of different medications in a pipeline, all working simultaneously until it gets to a point where you see that some, some drugs are further ahead. They've gleaned greater, in, greater insights through med medical trials. And from a commercial standpoint, they kind of identify that some of the medications are more commercially viable, they're in greater demand, they're going to have a greater impact and help people. And so they have to make commercial decisions driven by that. And you can see that it was a direct result of his strategic decision making that led to New, New River Pharmaceuticals acquisition by Shear PLC for 2.6 billion. You can see it in this article here right now. You know, if I just go down here and I just highlight this piece here, it says Shear has entered into a deal that allows the firm to capture the full economic value of its new ADHD drug, Vivance. And so you can see it was as a direct result of the development of Vivance, which was a strategic decision by Randall Kirk to reallocate resources, so money and staff into the development of this drug, which as a direct result led to Shear PLC's acquisition of New River Pharmaceuticals. And in that deal, Shear paid $64 per share, per share of New River Pharmaceuticals. And so you can see that Randall Kirk has a, has a track record of being very strategic in the development of these pipelines. He understands that he needs to pull certain uh, projects or developments off the pipeline to reprioritize based on the insights that he gets based on the development and progress and based on commercial demand as well and this is what he's doing at, at Presagen right now and so of course you know it can be quite a, quite a difficult time when you kind of enter into the market you think that um, uh, a, a share is, is trading at an incredibly good value which is kind of what I've done right is I've gone into the market you know um, I've looked at PGen, Presagen um, and I've, I've made two entries in them and then watching the, the price kind of decline quite severely and obviously with all of the discussions or rumours, you know, it's, I mean, it's not even rumours or discussions rather, it's just people on forums kind of speculating of a reverse stock split, which obviously can trigger a level of anxiety and stuff. But certainly with, with, with my case, you know, as you can see that I do like a fair amount of research. And it comes back to investing with individuals, investing with individuals with a proven track record, investing with individuals that have pedigree. You know, this this guy, Randall Kirk, has built his career off this. You know, he's been in this in, in this industry for numerous decades. He has a track record and I have a level of faith in his decision making. So on one hand, at the same time, you know, looking at the share price, looking at the decline, because I've made entries in and around one dollar and seeing it drop quite significantly at the moment, it can tr trigger a little bit of anxiety or, you know, frustration. Um, but I'm trying to pull back from that and to look at the global picture. So what is the global picture? Looking at um, the developments and changes that are taking place, which I'll go on in, in a more detail in the next video. But I, I, I kind of stand firm in my decision making. I stand firm in my evaluation of the company. I have faith in in uh, Randall Kirk's decision making, which I've kind of gone through in this video in kind of relative detail. And on top of that, the fact that, you know, he has um, through Third Security LLC and a further 10%, he has, you know, uh, around 50% or more um, holding in this company. He's very vested in this company. His reputation is on the line, his money is on the line. And so with all of that in mind, you know, I, I still kind of stand firm and, uh, and I'm in conviction on my decision making.